luck with that net. Blue heron just caught a big fish up yeah, he's here. He's a better fisherman than you guys. No, that's a snakehead. Snakehead. That's a northern snakehead. Really? Yeah. Looks like they got it. Is that it, guys? Yeah. Awesome. Can we get a picture of it? Come back in. Go home. Go home. What are they going to do with him now? <laughs> no, keep him alive. Ooh, I mean, you catch it. Oh, it's over. Yeah. They're, they're, they're going to do some DNA analysis. Open that mouth up. Okay. Which one do you actually grab it? Ooh, it's over there. Can't see me as that. Looks like he just spotted it from a ways away. Yeah. Good evening. Call it a superweed. A new type of plant is invading BC and it has experts worried. Knotweed grows inches in just days and can burst through your foundation. It's so bad that in the UK you can't get a mortgage if it's found on your property. Windmouth Park in North Vancouver looks idyllic, but to the trained eye there's something very wrong with this picture. The place is being stalked by a new biological invader that could cost all of us a fortune. Invasive plant teams consider knotweed, plantzilla, franken foliage, or the snakehead fish of the plant world. Knotweed can actually outcompete blackberries. Even the spokesperson from the Invasive Species Council of Metro Vancouver has knotweed in her Richmond neighborhood, growing right next door. It only took a year for this one invasive to be taken over by another. This plant can grow 15 feet deep. It can't be composted. The only way to get rid of it is to actually use herbicide. Jen Krenz says Metro Vancouver is becoming a hub for invasives. English ivy, lawn-chewing chafer beetles, dreaded hobo spiders, and the voracious snakehead fish. Knotweed is just the latest. The council is waging a losing war because to kill knotweed completely, each stock needs to get a lethal injection of herbicide. Some municipalities have outlawed certain herbicides, which is why the council is petitioning Metro Vancouver to develop a regional strategy to fight this foul foliage. Peter Granger, CTV News, North Vancouver. It's not here for a rescue. It's not out for a tour. This chopper is on an environmental mission to pick up a little unwanted baggage. And on this hill, surrounded by tall trees and a beautiful view, that baggage is scotch broom, and it's being bundled up and shipped out. Scotch broom is an invasive shrub. It is very damaging to Gary Oak and other sort of open um, open ecosystems in, in the region and in many parts of the world. Don't be fooled by striking yellow flowers. Each plant produces thousands of seeds each year and each shrub has the aggressive nature to destroy these majestic Gary Oaks, an endangered tree that only grows in select areas along the Pacific Northwest. CRD parks have set up sites to monitor how fast the broom grows back. They say it takes about eight years to see any kind of long-term results, but they've stumbled upon a few other positive Positive discoveries. Ten years ago, there was seven known native rare plants in over 30 spots on the hill. Now there's 13 in about 180 locations. On this day, they pulled four big bundles of this weed off the hill. It may not be welcome here, but it still has a use. The scotch broom will be brought to a commercial facility and turned into biofuel. Out on Mill Hill, I'm Jen Moranitz for The Daily. These two cousins from the Black and Caspian Seas have hitchhiked their way from Europe to the U.S., zapping every ounce of food energy from whatever water source they inhabit. The first zebra mussel in North America was found in 1988 in Lake St. Clair near Detroit. 
From there, they expanded eastward to Lake Ontario and into the St. Lawrence Seaway. It is an invasive plant that grows through concrete and can quickly take over an area. And now it's a problem for the expansion of Highway 1. As Leah Hendry explains, it's just the latest foreign species to invade. It looks idyllic, but lurking in the grass is an unwelcome intruder. Japanese knotweed is an invasive species. It can take over an entire area of competing native plants for space and sun. It's almost like a medusa with eight heads, so you cut off one and you get eight new ones. The Transportation Investment Corporation is responsible for building the Portman Bridge and expanding Highway 1. Along that 37 kilometers are 25 habitat sites like this one. For the past year, crews have tried to eradicate the knotweed by injecting a herbicide right into the stem. Why so aggressive? Well, take a look at this video. The weed has the power to come right through concrete and asphalt. So could the weed run rampant and bust through the newly constructed bridge or highway? I think that if it's actively managed and appropriately managed, that it will not be a concern. It's pretty easy to spot it when it, when it uh, shows up. The knotweed is one of many invasive species in B.C. Invasive species don't respect boundaries. Wallen says people need to educate themselves about invasive species. You can email or phone the council if you spot an invasive species. And spotters are also on the lookout for any plant or animal that could disrupt the ecosystem. Today we're in Garden Lake, near Enderby, just uh, close to Salmon Arm, BC. I'm with Steve Miracle, the regional small lake fisheries biologist for the Ministry of Environment out of Kamloops. So Garden Lake is, is one of nine lakes that uh, some individuals have put uh, mainly perch, but also in this lake, smallmouth bass, and in other lakes, uh, sunfish, uh, pumpkin seed. And uh, these fish certainly are great sports fish, but they certainly threaten the, uh, the entire area, uh, particularly if they get into the Shushua. It was so bad on this lake that the, uh, the bird life had diminished by over 50%. Frogs and amphibians, uh, salamanders were gone, and uh, the lake just really wasn't very healthy. You couldn't find an insect flying, actually. So we took it on the Ministry of Environment with funding through the Habitat Conservation Trust Foundation. We treated Gardam last year with uh, with a rope known product in, in October, early October, and uh, and then this uh, this year we stocked it in the spring with these uh, these catchable rainbows, these Fraser Valley rainbows. Insect life has come back, as you can see oh, here, amazingly. Bugs, bugs flying everywhere. With, within Maze, six months. of dragon. Perfect. So amazing fishery and, uh, you know, all because we, we got rid of the fish that, that were really a problem and would be a huge problem if they got into the main Thompson drainage. Yeah. And uh, we've, we've kind of revitalized this fishery.